the other hand, with a closed cell product. This is at two inches, and you may even be able to see a, a line right here. This has two passes of closed cell. Each pass is about one inch thickness. So we have about two inch thickness of closed cell foam. At two inches, that is under a perm rating of one. Why is that such a big deal? The vapor diffuser retarder is a perm is under a perm one, and this at two inches is under one perm. So what makes that so such a great thing? This stops the water with the uh, water vapor from passing up to in, into your house. This will completely halt it. Actually, to be technical, this is a vapor diffuser retarder. Vapor will ease will slowly, minimally pass a little bit into it and then it'll just, just diffuse. It will not move much further than that. So it will not even reach your floors. Um, also, because this, first of all, this cannot absorb water. Secondly, because it's a vapor retarder, you have very little vapor in here. Therefore, your R value uh, of this, which is a 6.8, is truly remaining an R 6.8 once you put this underneath the floor. If you want the best results, for cold floors in the wintertime. If you really want to have a nice, comfortable floor to walk barefoot on in the wintertime, you've got to go with the two inches of the closed cell foam. Also another, another uh, old wives tale we always hear in the industry is, well, you know, what if I drop some water, spill some water on my floor? This is not going to let it air out or breathe out of the product. All right, let's go into that. Here's, here's how that works. First of all, if you drop some water or spill something on the floor, you have a leak somewhere, you wipe it up. That's with anything. Of course you're going to wipe it up. Well, we don't know it's there. Well, eventually what happens is you have an air conditioner inside your house. In our environment, we need to contribute attribute about 40% of, the, de of the, the operation of your AC just to uh, removing humidity from the house. We usually don't get that good of a, of a ratio out of it, but that's what we try to achieve. But still, it's the job of the AC to remove humidity from inside the house. So any water or anywhere that's around there, that's the purpose of the AC to dehumidify. If there is a leak, and let's be honest, of course you're going to wipe it up. Now, again, if there's a leak, it can't. if it can get past your floor somehow, it's surely not going to get past this. If anything, this is going to hold the water, not allowed to go anywhere. You're going to see you had a leak. There have been many houses where we've been into where homeowners say, I had a washing machine leak. I hear that quite often, a washing machine leak, because it just wasn't, it was a little bit off when they screwed it in, a little stream of water coming out. If you have fiberglass or open cell foam and any holes, penetrations under the floor, maybe your gas line's coming up through there, a vent, something, or your dryer washing machine, that water is going to drip right into your open cell product or your fiberglass or whatever insulation is down there other than a closed cell foam and it's going to be trapped in there. It's not going to go anywhere. It's just going to, the moisture is just going to move through the product. And now you're going to be in a situation with, it's, it's since it's not going to, that water is not going to go anywhere, it's going to hold like a sponge. Now you're going to be in a scenario again where that water that's absorbed in this open cell product, the water vapor wants to move back up into the house, but it cannot do that because you have a polyurethane coating. And again, you risk buckling the floors. Right. One other point I want to make about op open cell and closed cell is this. When our value is given to a product, it's done under factory conditions. It's done under, in other words, experimental conditions. It's assuming the water vapor isn't present. It's assuming airflow isn't present. Once you put vapor into this product, again, we talked about it, decreasing the R value of the product. However, if you happen to tear a product like this by ripping the skin in any sort of way, that skin is part of two things. It's part of helping retard the vapor just a little bit, and it's also what's factored into our value. When you tear away these pieces, you are now exposed with actual open cells everywhere. You no longer have the skin that cures over when it dries. What makes that such a big deal? Well, you're losing your R value. R value is assuming you have the skin on. Once you lose it, you're losing your R value. Once you lose it, you allow more vapor to pass through it much more easily. It's already easy to do with open cell product, but now you're allowing more of it to pass through this open cell product. And again, you're decreasing the insulating value of this product. So what would be the case where you may lose the skin? Well, you know what, underneath your house, Critters like to get down there, bunny rabbits, rats, raccoons, dogs, cats, we all know it. That was always a problem with fiberglass. Can't tell you how many homeowners I know from experience and inspections on houses that I've done over the years that say I can hear the rats nestled in between 
the, the fiberglass in my floors. I can hear something down there and it's pulling out. We go into many houses where you have to pull out fiberglass before we spray it an insulation product in there. In a case like this, eat very easily. Anything could chew its way right into it. I've seen several cases, even in attics, where a rat has found its way into a gable vent or underneath the house and it will easily just chew its way in. It'll just develop a little bit of a hole in there and it'll just nicely live in there for the longest time. This will allow that to happen, especially the closer you are to the ground. With a closed cell product, on the other hand, nothing's going past that product. This has this adds up to 300% structural integrity to your house. People say, well, if that's the case, will my, if I, my house shifts and things like that happen, will any hairline fracture start will begin? First of all, this does have about a 5% flexibility to it, so it can move slightly with the house. But secondly, it's gonna hold that house together like a tight sealed box. The whole house at that point has to move for something to happen. This will hold the house together. Um, also, to get past this skin, no critter. Can something eat through it? I'm not sure. I have never seen it happen. Not saying it can't happen, but I've never seen any any rat, bug, type of insect eat through the skin of this closed cell phone. So, assuming that you maintain, so since the skin is such a hard part of this whole structure of the closed cell product, again, it's a, it's a retarding vapor flow and it's maintaining the true R value that you were quoted when you bought this product. So this is Jeff Haig from Envirogreen Insulation. Just wanted to talk to you about this particular case study on this beautiful house on Carrollton Avenue in New Orleans. Again, wrap it all up. This is a particular, particular case where they have an extreme amount of vapor pressure underneath the house. Their, cold, their floors are very cold during the winter time. They've been having water vapor and humidity problems in the house. The ACs have been trouble keeping up with it. In a case like that, you do want to go with a closed cell polyurethane foam. This is a true vented enclosed crawl space. They always have moisture traveling right into this underneath the house. You need protection of a closed cell polyurethane foam product to protect your house against anything, uh, wood rots, high moisture content, water vapor entering your home. This is Jeff Haig at Biogreen Insulation. We want your business. Please give us a call at 504-344-6762 or uh, check out our website. We have a very informative website on the differences between these products. It's www.envirogreeninsulation.com. Thanks for your time.